Hi guys, in this video take a look at the properties of vectors, the magnitude of a vector, direction of a vector, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what are the main properties of vectors? Consider the case when we wish to travel from one location to another. Let's say we're currently at the shop and we'd like to travel to the train station. So we have an arrow pointing from the shop to the train station. We know already that the displacement from one place to another can be represented by a vector. If we're looking at the displacement from one location to another, then we can write the displacement as, say, p, where p is a vector. However, the components of the vector do not explicitly tell us the magnitude or the direction of the vector. Let's say we have p in the column vector form 5 minus 2, or even in component form 5i minus 2j. From this, we can not immediately see what the magnitude or size of the vector is, or the direction of the vector. To work out the distance between the two places, we can calculate the magnitude of the vector. Given a certain vector, the magnitude of the vector is equal to the length of that vector, from its start point to its end point. And in order to describe the direction, we can calculate an angle to a chosen horizontal. So given this vector here, we have this chosen horizontal here, and the angle theta between the vector and the horizontal is a nice way to describe the direction of the vector. So firstly, how can we calculate the magnitude of a vector? The magnitude of a vector AB is in distance from A to B. Let's say we have our vector AB, and in column vector notation, this is going to be the vector 3, 3. This corresponds to starting at point A and going 3 along in the right direction, and then going 3 up, and then we arrive at the point B. The magnitude of the vector AB is simply the distance between A and B. We can write the magnitude of the vector AB using the modulus sign. The magnitude of the vector AB is simply equal to the modulus of AB. We have these modulus brackets around the vector. To work out this distance AB, we can split the vector into a horizontal and vertical component. So we have our two points A and B. We have our plus 3, which is our horizontal component of the vector from A to B. And we also have the plus 3 up, which is the vertical component of the vector. In component form, our vector AB, of course, can be written as 3i plus 3j. So here we have our horizontal component here, and our vertical component here. Now, drawing it in this way creates a right-angled triangle. We again have the points A and B, and in the middle, when we've only travelled the plus 3 to the right, i.e. the horizontal component but not the vertical component, we can write a point C. And at the point C, there is indeed a right angle. So this is the right angle triangle BAC. We can recall the formula for Pythagoras' theorem. Let's say we have a length A here and a length B here, and we can call the length here C. Then to calculate C, we do a squared plus b squared, and we get c squared. As a reminder, this is Pythagoras' theorem. By applying Pythagoras' theorem, we can calculate the magnitude distance of AB. So again, here we have our point A, and here we have our point B, and there is this right angle at the point C in between. And using the components of the vector from A to B, AC is going to have a length of 3, and BC is also going to have a length of 3. And so the length of AB, which is the modulus of AB, and then all of this squared, this is the length of the hypotenuse AB all squared, is going to be equal to the sum of the squares of the, of the other two sides. So we have a 3 squared for the AC squared, and a plus 3 squared for the BC squared. Therefore, we get that the magnitude of AB 
is going to be equal to the square root of this 3 squared plus 3 squared. Well, that is 9 plus 9, which is 18. And by using our thirds, we get the magnitude of AB is going to be equal to 3 root 2. In general, we can use a formula to find the magnitude of a vector. If we have our vector, little x underlined, is equal to x, y in the horizontal and vertical components, then the modulus of the vector x is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. This just comes from Pythagoras' theorem. So we take our vector, little x underlined, and we get our magnitude of the vector using this formula. So how can we find the direction of a given vector? A vector, AB, can be represented on a pair of axes. If we have the points A here and B here, then this vector is the vector AB with an arrow above. The direction of a vector is the angle the vector makes with the horizontal that is parallel to the positive x-axis. So again we have our points A and B, and we have an angle which is theta between the vector and the positive x-axis. Now recall the definition of the tangent of an angle. The tangent of an angle theta is equal to the opposite to the angle, which is a length, divided by the adjacent to the angle, which is another length. Now, for a general vector, this is going to be equal to y divided by x. This is because if our a starts at the origin and our b goes a certain length x along and a certain length y up, then our length here is y and our length here is x, and these are the opposite and adjacents for this angle theta. And hence, we can describe the direction of a vector by the angle to the horizontal theta. We have that theta is equal to the tan inverse of y over x. For example, the direction of the vector AB as follows can be described by the angle to the horizontal. Let's say we have our point A here and our point B here. And we'll say that the angle here is the angle theta. Let's say again as before that this length here is 3 because it's 3 to the right, and this length here is also 3, because it's 3 up. And therefore we get that the tan of the angle theta is going to be equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is the 3 from the plus 3 up, divided by the 3 from the plus 3 along. This is of course equal to 1, when we divide the 3 by the 3, and therefore theta is given by the tan inverse of 1, and this is equal to 45 degrees. So therefore the direction is 45 degrees. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example is to find the magnitude of the vector AB with components minus 1 and minus 2. Our first step is to recall the formula for the magnitude of a general vector. If our vector x is equal to x, y in component form, then our magnitude of the vector x, which is written as the modulus of x, is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared. Our second step is to substitute the values of the components to calculate the distance AB. We've been given our vector AB as having the components minus 1, minus 2. So therefore, by comparing, we have that x is equal to minus 1 and that y is equal to minus 2. And therefore, the modulus of the vector AB is going to be equal to the square root of the minus 1 all squared plus the minus 2 all squared. And therefore we have the square root of 1 plus 4 from the squares, and this gives us the square root of 5. And so our third step is to write down the magnitude of the vector. The magnitude of the vector AB is going to be the square root of 5 by our calculation. Our second example asks us to find the magnitude and direction of the vector p is equal to minus root 2, 1. Our first step is to recall the formula for the magnitude of a general vector. In general, 
if we have that x is the vector x, y, then the magnitude of x is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared. Our second step is to substitute to calculate the magnitude of the vector p. We have that our vector p is equal to minus root 2, 1. And therefore, by comparing, we have that our x is equal to minus root 2, and that our y is equal to 1. And therefore, the magnitude of p is going to be given by the square root of minus root 2 all squared plus 1 squared. Well, minus root 2 all squared is 2, and 1 squared is 1, so we have the square root of 2 plus 1. And this is equal to the square root of 3. So the magnitude of p is root 3. Our third step is to recall that the direction of the vector p can be found by the angle made with the horizontal. Now, in this case, our value of x is negative, and so we have our x being over here, and we have our y being up here. And so we're going to take our angle, theta, to be the angle between the vector p and the negative x-axis this time. And as such, theta is going to be given by the tan to the minus 1 of y over x. But when we say x, we mean the positive version, i.e. root 2, not minus root 2, because we've already taken account of the negative by being in this direction. And so our fourth step is to substitute to calculate the angle. We have that our theta, as shown in the diagram, is going to be the tan inverse of y over x, which is 1 over, in this case, the positive version, just root 2. And this, on a calculator, is given by 35.3 degrees to three significant figures. And so our last step is to state the magnitude and describe the direction of the vector using the angle found. Again, we're taking our vector p and having our angle over here between the vector p and the negative x-axis. Ordinarily, we take our angle theta to be the angle between p and the positive x-axis. But taking the angle as we have in this question is okay as long as we state it as such. We have that our magnitude is given by root 3, and we have that our direction is 35.3 degrees with the negative x-axis, or 144.7 degrees with the positive x-axis, using 180 minus 35.3. Our last example asks us to write the vector p as a column vector, given that it has a magnitude of root 2 and makes an angle of 45 degrees to the positive x-axis. Our first step is to sketch a diagram to represent the vector. We have this angle of 45 degrees here, with the positive x-axis here. And this is the vector p, and we've been given that the magnitude of p is equal to root 2. Our first step is to recall the definition of sine. Given a right angle triangle with an angle of theta in general, and then the opposite side to the angle, and of course the hypotenuse, we have that the sine of theta is defined as the ratio of the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The sine of theta is defined as the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse. Our second step is to recall the exact value of sine 45 or use a calculator. Either way, we have that the sine of 45 degrees is equal to 1 over root 2. Our third step is to use the value of sine 45 and the magnitude of the vector to work out the length of the opposite side to the angle. We have that the magnitude of p is given by root 2. And therefore, since we know the angle is 45 degrees, we can draw on the opposite to the angle, which will be y, in terms of the component of the column vector. Then we can rearrange our equation for sine of theta, since the sine of theta in general is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. We can substitute in our theta and our hypotenuse length, and we have the sine of 45 for theta is equal to y, which is the opposite, divided by root 2. And then the sine of 45 is just 1 over root 2. So 1 over root 2 equals y over root 2, and therefore by comparing or multiplying, we get that y must be equal to 1. Our fourth step is to recall Pythagoras' theorem. If we have a right angle triangle 
with a side length A here and a side length B here, and then a side length for the hypotenuse C here, we have that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And this is Pythagoras' theorem. Our fifth step is to apply Pythagoras' theorem to work out the remaining length. We have that our magnitude of P is equal to root 2. And we have the opposite length is 1. All we need now is this distance x here, and we use Pythagoras' theorem, and we get that x squared, that's a squared, plus 1 squared, is equal to root 2, all squared. This gives us that x is equal to the square root of 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, and the square root of 1 is also 1, so x is equal to 1. Our sixth step is to write down the components of the vector using the lengths of the opposite and the adjacent. We've been told that the length of the hypotenuse is root 2, and the angle is 45 degrees. And this has allowed us to work out the lengths of the opposite and adjacent to the angle, namely 1 and 1 for adjacent and opposite. And therefore the vector P is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to 1i for the horizontal plus 1j for the vertical. Our seventh step is to write down the vector as a column vector. Using the above, we get that p is going to be equal to 1, 1. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappify smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.